This material is made available to you by or on behalf of the University of Melbourne under Section 113P of the Copyright Act 1968. It may be subject to copyright. For more information, visit the University Copyright website. Social interaction can sometimes feel hard. The cringeworthy thing we said in front of a new acquaintance can stick in our mind for days. And some of us will do almost anything to avoid having to do public speaking. But at the same time, most of us are better than we think at navigating the social world. Our skills at navigating our everyday interactions can be so good that we don't even notice them. So how do we learn to do this? Human biology seems primed to make us the most social of animals. We are very good at learning from those around us. We grow up and we learn the laws, traditions, norms and values of the groups we're part of. Sociologists call this socialization. This socialization doesn't turn us into robots. We still make choices. Within the boundaries and possibilities of our social context, or what sociologists call structures, we can make decisions. We can even act, individually or collectively, to change things. Sociologists call this agency. So don't think of the structures and agencies of our world as two opposing forces that are out there, one constraining what we do and the other us using our personal powers to do our own thing. Structures also allow us to act and some shared understanding about the rules. This is what allows us to do things in interaction with others, from buying the milk going to a concert, or even starting a protest movement. On the other hand, the rules and norms only continue to exist because people reproduce them. In other words, self and society, structure and agency are not opposing forces acting in the world, but two sides of the one coin. Just because some shared rules and expectations are necessary to society doesn't mean that the rules and norms of our social groups are good or fair. Your odds of getting caught and punished for breaking the rules is not down to chance. Sociologists argue that it is impossible to understand this link between self and society without understanding power. you probably can make a good guess at who in society finds it easy to get away with things and who gets labelled a deviant or even criminal for even the most minor breaches of the rules. The rules and norms of our social world also change. One of the biggest changes today is the rise of digital technology. Social media allows us to act and connect with others in new ways. It's also forcing people to create new rules. Until very recently, using your phone in a sociology lecture would have been considered by almost everyone to be a distraction, a type of procrastination, and your lecturer would probably have thought it was pretty rude. Well, you still probably shouldn't answer a call from your friend in the middle of class. Now, however, many of your lecturers will embed polls and links and other things in lectures that will need those phones and you might miss out if you don't have your smartphone with you in class. Whether you learn about it on your phone or not, understanding this link between self and society 
And the context of change is at the foundation of understanding how society works, but also how it could be better and fairer.